Tune in online as well if you're on the Father's House, INT.org, the Facebook, uh, the YouTube channel. We're just so honored and pleased you chose to be here this morning. And we're going to worship the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let's stand together if we can get ready to worship the Lord today. And I was reading Luke chapter 7 this morning, and there's a story about a, a woman who's carrying her dead son out of the city of Nain. And, or not, I don't know how you pronounce it. Nain sounds good. Jesus comes on the scene, speaks over the dead body. The dead body sits up and starts speaking. And it just said to me this morning, you know what? Nothing is impossible in the presence of God. Amen? That this morning, in the presence of God, whatever you're believing for, whatever you're praying for, nothing is impossible in the presence of God. Amen? Hallelujah. So, Lord, we're in your house. We're in your presence. Lord, we want everything you have for us. Whatever we've been believing for, whatever we've been praying for, Lord, we believe that today could be our day. Amen? And we thank you for your presence in Jesus' name, everyone said. Amen. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah.
Father God, we thank you for your presence. Oh, hallelujah. We lift you up in this place today, Father God. And we just thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. All right, I need some help. I need at least 10 people who you're going through it. Come on, you're going through some stuff. Come on, you've been fighting some battles. you got some stuff stirring in you. Come on, I need your help up here. Come on, come on. You've made up your mind. I am not quitting. I am not going backwards. Amen. I may be going through it, but I'm going to go through it, and I'm going to win. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, there's more. we got at least 10. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right, I need you to take another step. Come on up here with me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Kim. Come on. I'm going through it. I'm not going to quit. Come on. Come on. Come on, Ray. Come on up here, Ray. Come on. Come on. I'm not going to make you talk in front of anybody. We're just making up our mind right now. I'm going to sing. Amen. I'm going to sing. And I'll raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I'll raise a hallelujah and I will watch the darkness flee. And I'll raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I'll raise a hallelujah. Oh, fear you lost your hold on me. Yes, I'm going to sing in the middle of the
your hands up this morning, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just feel in my heart this morning there's some people in the room that the devil thought that he'd taken you out. There's some people in the room this morning that the devil thought you had not raised your head again. The devil thought he'd thrown something at you to get you out of the plan of God. The devil thought that he would keep you down and shut the mouth of the church in this nation. But God is raising us up and God has got you back on track with himself. And I just want to hear the shout from the church this morning that says, I will not be kept down. I'm coming out of the darkness. I'm coming out of despair. I'm coming out of distractions. And now I'm going to rise up with the voice of authority in this hour. Can I just hear the shout of the church this morning? Hallelujah. Please look at your neighbor this morning and say, no matter what, they can't shut me up. Oh, come on, say to your other neighbor, no matter what, I won't lose my voice. In this hour, God is telling each one of us, speak up. Don't let them silence you. Don't let them shut you down. That we don't believe in cancel culture around here. Come on, somebody. We dare to be the voice of church in this generation, the voice of God in this generation. There's some in the house this morning that God is calling you back to himself. Can we have every eye closed in the house for just a moment? God is dealing with some hearts this morning where he is drawing a line and saying, I want you on my side. I want you on my team. I want you in my family. I want you to be with me. But there is a line that is dividing, a line that's not of racism, a line that's not a, 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 of, of gender. There is a line that is being drawn across this nation of who is with God and who is against God. And it is a day of decision to say, I'm going to be with Jesus Christ. I'm going with God this morning. And there's some people that have been a little bit on one side and a little bit on the other. And God is saying, if you'll choose me this morning, my arms are open to you. I'm drawing you to myself. I have a plan for your life. I have a purpose for your life. You are not an accident. You are not an afterthought. I designed you on purpose to draw you to myself and reveal myself in your life. With every eye shut this morning, if you're in the house this morning, you're online this morning, and you're just saying, I need to get back to God. I can't live with one foot in the world and one foot with God. I need to decide whose side I'm on. If that's you this morning, would you just lift your hand and say, I want to get right with God this morning. I want to be on the right side this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray together this morning. Say, Lord Jesus, I decide this morning that I'm with you. I desire your plan to be fulfilled in my life. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross, that you rose again, that you did it for me. And this morning, Lord Jesus, I make you the Lord of my life. Come and have your way in my life. And Satan, I renounce you. That means I don't want you. I want you to say, I renounce you and all your works and all your ways. I no longer belong to you. I am a child of the living God. From this day forward, I'm a child of light. And I will stand for righteousness. And I will use my voice. And no one will shut my mouth. When God tells me to speak, I will speak for him in the name of Jesus. Can you give him a big shout this morning? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's sing it one more time. Let's sing it again. One more time.
give God a clap off and a praise this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Welcome to church this morning. Aren't you glad you came to church today? Amen. Praise God. Thank you. You, you will all be seated. Best choir in town right here. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, worship leaders and musicians. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Welcome to church today. Welcome to the Father's house. It's just uh, always incredible, uh, always incredible to get to come together as a family of God, the church of God, and worship him, be in his presence, and it's just incredible. And we're going to continue to honor and worship God today with our tithes and offerings, Father's house. Ushers, you come forward this morning. Give us our opportunity. Praise God. Best ushers in the business right here. Amen. <laughs> I'm biased, but there we go. Praise God. I've been doing a lot of studying lately. I mentioned this first service uh, about this term honor, about this work of, of honor. The word, it's, it's pronounced teamy in, in, the, in the Bible, but it basically means to highly value, highly esteem, uh, to put above almost everything else or uh, above everything else. And, and we're called to, to honor God in our tithes and offerings. And that is to, to make it valuable, to make it something that's important in our life and, and above everything else and to make sure that we honor God in, in every area of our life. And so that's what we do today. We, as, we, as we do our tithes and offerings, we're showing that we honor God in every area of our life. We trust him in every area of our life and we follow his word in every area of our life. Amen. So with that being said, Lord, we pray over this opportunity you've given us today to honor you in your house, Lord. We experience your presence, Lord, and we're going to honor you through this act, Lord. And we just pray, we just thank you, Lord. We know your word is good. Your word is faithful. You say you'll open up the windows of heaven. You'll pour out a blessing we cannot contain. And we ask that you to bless the gift and the giver this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. A couple announcements today for you to pay attention to. First up, coming up, starting Tuesday here in Sutherland, is the start of the school year. Every parent said, yay. All right. Every kid said, whoa. But, so coming up, does, how many people know that school will look different to start the year? Online distance learning uh, is how we're starting the school year. But how many people know that church looked very different a few months ago, right? Church looked very different a few months ago, but God used it for his glory, right? God used it to bring his glory and to grow the church. And how many people know that just because school looks differently, God can still use it to bring about his glory in what we're doing, amen? So with that going on, uh, me and, and multiple other uh, youth pastors and churches in, the, in Sutherland have come up with a plan. We're going to open up. For us here at the Father's House, we're going to open up the, the youth house every Wednesday and Thursday afternoon from 12.30 to 4, and we're going to have online learning support here at the Father's House. So how many people know who work with kids or whatever? Sometimes home is not the best place to do homework. And so we're providing a space for people to bring their kids down for a few hours. There'll be people there to help. There'll be some snacks. Uh, and it just above all, they'll feel supported and know that there's a place they can go to get work done. Uh, so that's going to be starting the 16th and the 17th here. Uh, if you love to volunteer, come on and help us with that. We would love to have you because uh, kind of the more people we have involved, we might be able to expand our hours a little bit. But we really want you guys to come along and help and support these kids. So come see me. Come see Jen. And we'll, help, we'll let you know which way you can help us do that. Amen? Amen. Jeannie? Everybody welcome Jeannie this morning. We're starting flourish groups again, and they will look a little different than they have before. We're having an exercise class, and it will be, it will be Friday at 10 o'clock over there by the kitchen. You will need to bring a mat of some kind for the floor work. And a water bottle. And... Soup cans. No. If you don't have hand weights, a couple of these would work. I only had one. <laughs> but if you have the other one, I'll loan you my one. Okay, hand weights. 
Now, if you don't have any hand weights or any big soup cans, just come anyway, because Debbie Lang has been going from used stores to used stores and gathering these up, so we have some extra. So, not only are we going to be moving, we're going to be learning scripture at the same time. And our focus is really to get acquainted with newer people. So if you're looking for friends, and there's a lot of people in here that you don't know yet, just come and get acquainted with us, and we promise that we won't overwork you. You'll still be able to walk when we're all finished. We're just, the main thing is to have fun together. Are you, are you for it? Okay then, come up here and sign up before you go home today so we'll know how many to get ready for. Uh, 10 o'clock next Friday, right over there. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. So our Flourish Groups is our women's uh, small groups of ministry, uh, and Jeannie will be here Friday morning at 10 a.m. for your ladies to get your swole. Okay? So it'll be good. Huh? We're going to let uh, kids go off to Children's Church. Uh, there's follow Becky as she comes forward, and Tiffany. We have a round of applause for Becky and Tiffany, who every week are doing. They're incredible. Hallelujah. Yeah. We love kids here. Amen. In fact, Cooper is back there, I think, right? Yeah. Can we introduce Cooper? We believe in growing the church, whether it's one member at a time or what. Here's the newest one, two-month-old Cooper. Yeah. Proud mama there. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Wonderful to see you all this beautiful Sunday morning. If anybody asks, we're open. Amen? We're open. I've had, I had a question even just yesterday. I said, is the church back open? And I said, well, we never really closed. We were in the parking lot some, we were in the cars some, we had a single Sunday where we were online only, uh, we weren't quite ready for drive-in church at that time and it was pouring down rain and uh, anyway, maybe it was just my fault that I didn't feel like preaching out there under an umbrella, but uh, anyway, y'all forgive me for that, but we're open, amen, and God is good. And those ladies that are interested in a flourish group but do not like the sound of of, I don't know what the right word is, exercise. Um, I promised myself, you see, when I got done playing college baseball, I promised myself I wasn't going to run for at least two years. It's been 15. <laughs> yes. I figure, uh, what does it say? You know, the, it, it, I've, I've seen it on Facebook, and I hope I quote it correctly, but the wicked flees when no one pursues. Some of you are getting that more. Well, it'll come shortly. Anyhow, there are two other groups. So Pam and Brenda are doing a prophetic art class over in the garage on September 24th. It's in your bulletin. You can see that one. And my wife, uh, God bless my wife, she's got a fun idea of going into the park, meeting, having a, you know, a little time together at Stewart Park, and then going evangelizing in the park, some you know, uh, outreach stuff. And so you can see her. That's also on the calendar. Uh, at the end of this month, it's going to be fun. Uh, but we'd, we want to encourage you, uh, ladies, you know, to, 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 to get involved. Find one that, that you can connect with. If no other reason, how many know it's fun to know those who you go to church with? Amen. On even more of a basis than just coming in and worshiping God together. It's a good thing. Amen. I want you to turn with me in your, your Bibles to a couple of different scriptures this morning. And uh, we're going to go in two places at once. And the reason is, if I don't discipline myself and get them both out at the beginning, we're never going to get to both of them. Amen. So I want you, if you got your Bibles, we're going we're gonna to land in Hosea, the sixth chapter. So put a marker there. 
but we're going to jump off from Luke chapter 16. So those that have the electronic version of the Bible, just be ready to move really quickly. And those that have, a, a, you know, the, 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 how many actually have a real Bible version? I'm seeing almost everybody in here has phones. How many got the phone Bible or, ta or tablet Bible or electronic version going? That's awesome. They all work. Amen. What version of the Bible do you preach out of, Pastor John? The one that works. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> Luke chapter 16, Jesus is, is preaching here. I guess I ought to obey my own instruction and turn to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, verse 16. The law and the prophets. Now, uh, any time that you see, especially in the Gospels, a reference where you see those two put together, the law and the prophets, okay, um, is a reference to what we call the Old Testament Scriptures, okay? The law refers to the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That was called the law, the law of Moses, sometimes it's referred to. Um, but, but it's the first five books of the Bible. Prophets then being all of the prophetic books, uh, there's the historical, the historical ones. You got the Samuel's and the Kings and the Chronicles and those on. But whenever you see the phrase "the law and the prophets" in the New Testament, it's a reference to the Old Testament Scripture. Well, why wouldn't they just say the whole Bible? The New Testament wasn't written yet. Okay, it, it, it's this is Jesus teaching. They have, they've they've got the Old Testament. How many know that Jesus said he didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law? Amen. And so here we find this. We find the law and the prophets were until John. That's not me. Okay? This is a reference to John the Baptist. I'm glad that all preachers are not required to live off John the Baptist diet. My wife asked, is it keto-friendly? I think the locusts probably were. Remember it says he ate locusts and wild honey. I don't know if honey qualifies for keto-friendly. Anyway, he ate locusts and wild honey. And John the Baptist, Jesus taught about him. He said, this is the greatest man born among women from all time up, up until this time. I mean, Jesus told the, his followers, look, uh, John the Baptist is greater than all of the Old Testament prophets. That's this guy he's talking about. And yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is even greater than him, right? And so John the Baptist is this, this pivotal figure. He is the last of what we would call the Old Testament prophets. And he had a job, he had an assignment to make straight, to declare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord. He was the herald coming to announce to everybody, and his message was simple. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Get right with God. Amen. We just heard that declared this morning. It is time. There is a dividing line that is happening where we are making decisions that we are either getting right with God or we in trouble. Amen. And John the Baptist, it says, the law and the prophets were preached until John. But God, excuse me, that's the wrong verse. Since that time. The kingdom of God has been preached. The kingdom of God has been proclaimed. The kingdom of God is being declared, and everyone is pressing into it. Say press. Flip over to Hosea chapter 6. Everyone is pressing into this. Hosea chapter 6 in the third verse, let us know. Let us press in or pursue the knowledge of God. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter rain and the former rain unto the earth. I have a word today, a message today that God has laid on my heart that is not for those who are happy this is going to sound really funny. Who are happy and satisfied just to be saved. A 
But it's for those who realize there is a lot more to this Christian life than fire insurance. There is a lot more to this Christian life than just getting in because we prayed a prayer. And I love this house because it's a house of hungry people. People that are in hot pursuit of the things of God. Hot pursuit of the things of God. I remember best illustration I can think of of when I was in hot pursuit. I was in college, and I was playing baseball, and I came home from college, and I, my, you know, I, I got raised in church. I was raised in, in, in a good home, and uh, yet I was going through this, this transitional season where I was moving from my, you know, my church's relationship with God, my parents' relationship with God, into my own personal walk with God. Amen? And uh, you know, so I'm, I'm in this season of transition on that, and I'm really getting that, that, that passion and that hunger for the things of God. And I, I, I'm home for 10 days, and, uh, you know, I've got two left, and then I'm taking off to go play baseball in St. Joseph, Missouri for the summer. It's a Wednesday night, and uh, how many remember the teen center days? Right? Downtown. William and Lisa Powell run on the teen center down there. It's been, I don't know how many different restaurants ever since and, you know, and all that. But uh, they, they had 100 kids running in and out of there. And, uh, you know, so I, when I was home on, you know, during the weeks, if I wasn't up at college, I'd go down just to be an extra set of eyes. And Because how many know if you got 100 kids in one place, you need a few extra sets of eyes. Amen? All right. Some of you understand what I'm talking about. And, you know, so, so I'm down there, and, and afterwards there's this, this little staff meeting, and of course, uh, you know, they, they want to pray for me. And there is this absolutely stunningly gorgeous, passionate about God, on fire young lady by the name of Cammie, and her friend Tessa, and you remember Travis, and, and we've been talking and talking, so finally they said, well, let's pray for you. You're getting ready to go to Kansas, you know, excuse me, Missouri. Let's pray for you. And that's what you do when you're at a Pentecost. So we gather around, and we're praying, and, you know, and I'm excited because I'm getting to hold her hand in prayer. Come on. How many know what I'm talking about? I mean, she is so far out of my league. This is as close as it's ever going to get, you know. And so, I mean, you know, we're praying, and we, get, we say amen, and it was a great prayer time, and I don't remember anything about what was happening during the prayer time. I just remember what happened when I took a deep breath. Because how many know God will speak? And I kind of sat down like this on the edge of the couch for a second on the, on the arm of the couch. I just kind of sat down and, you know, closed my eyes. Because the presence of God was in the room as they were praying over me, you know. And I took a deep breath. Like, yeah, and I had an image dropped into my heart. Yeah. I, you understand what I'm talking about? God, it's just this, this image deposit there. And I saw an image of that beautiful, gorgeous, on fire for Jesus woman, Cami, in a wedding dress. Somebody say amen. I'll show you what I did. I got to go. And I am out of there. I mean, I jumped in my car. I drove to Missouri. I got to figure this thing out. Okay. And, uh, you know, I, I had some, uh, a couple encounters with God. This is, this is what you got to realize. We talk about encounters with God. This was brand new for me. Nothing like this has ever happened before in my life. And, uh, you know, I mean, I was so understanding that that was the woman God had in store for me that when I got into my host family's home from the year before, and, and they say, how are you doing? And she goes, are you dating anybody? And out of my mouth she goes, well, I know who I'm going to marry. And because she had the question, like, are you dating anybody? Like, I know somebody you ought to meet. How many ever had those questions? Okay, you understand what I'm talking about. I said, yep, I know who I'm going to marry. And she goes, oh. And I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, wow, all summer long, people thought I was engaged. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I had guys coming up and telling me, man, it, it's so nice for you to be engaged. You already got that thing set up. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, yeah, it is. <laughs> 
But, you know, I, I knew because when, when you know something and you know something from God, you, you know, and I, I'm a little bit stubborn, okay, and, and I hold on to this thing. And so, you know, I, I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm suddenly getting to that point of hot pursuit. How many know I'm talking about? And I, I finally work up the nerve and I dial her phone number and, I, and, and she answers the phone and, and she says, hello, and I said, hi, Cammie, how are you doing? She goes, I'm good. Who's this? And her response was, I was thinking, why is John Zumwalt calling me? Why is John Zumwalt calling me? I said, hot pursuit. Somebody say hot pursuit. We talked for about two hours on the phone, hung up a couple, hours, a couple weeks later. I called back again. And a couple weeks later, I called back again. And, you know, then she starts kind of you know, dropping questions because she's probing. She's starting to think something's up with this. I didn't care. I'm in hot pursuit. And I got back to town, and, and, and I went back into the teen center, and, and, and uh, you know, I mean, there she is sitting there in worship. And, I mean, we, I took her on our first date. We went and had ice cream and walked around on a baseball field. Somebody say hot pursuit. And we talked and we talked. And I remember, you know, a couple weeks later, we're, we're, we're up talking. How many know we're up talking? Everybody say talking. Until 4 o'clock in the morning, not even knowing what time it is. Anybody know what I'm talking about being in hot pursuit? And uh, it, it, it was like all of a sudden I realized it's 4 o'clock in the morning. And I said, well, can I buy you breakfast? And we just went down to the Apple Peddler over there by the freeway and had breakfast, you know, because I was in hot pursuit. And... Then the day came when I, I'd made up my mind, I'm going to ask this girl to marry me. And I go into Costco, and I, I'm walking out with 60 candles and six dozen roses because I got a plan in place. And the, the guy doing the checkout line, he just says, man, you must really be in trouble. And I said, nope, I'm in hot pursuit. I'm going to ask this girl to marry me. And, and like some of them are just like, oh, you know, the, the checkout response. I was in hot pursuit. And sometimes that hot pursuit cost me. I mean, I had to get up and go to work after not sleeping at all. And I hardly noticed. How many know what I'm talking about? Because I'm in hot pursuit. And that ring was expensive. I got no amens from the guys. They're all just sitting here just like not saying a word right now. It's expensive, isn't it, BJ? It didn't matter because I'm in hot pursuit. And I find here the author of Hosea, this, this chapter, he makes this statement. He said, let us press in. Let us pursue the knowledge of God. I found something that in my walk with God, there is a demand that I am willing to press in, and sometimes it's costly. But I want to tell you something. It may have cost me some sleep and cost me some cash, but my goodness, was it worth it. And in the pursuit of God, it is going to cost us some things. But don't let that scare you. Because my goodness, a relationship with Jesus is worth it. I was thinking about things that, I wrote this list down last night. Things I've had to press through this week. I had to press through being tired this week. I'm sorry if it bothers you that your pastor admitted he got tired. I know we only work on Sundays. <laughs> I got asked that by the coffee lady down at Dutch Bros the other day. The young lady, she goes, you're a pastor. I said, yeah. You know, I was one of the newer workers. You know, most of them know who I am. But anyway, she said, well, I, can I ask a, a funny question? And you just kind of have a feeling you know what's coming, you know. And I said, sure, 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 yeah, yeah. She goes, well, like, you preach on Sunday. What do you do the rest of the week? I just really wanted to say, oh, go fishing, you know. <laughs> I mean, what, what, you know, yeah. I, I was tired this week when my alarm went off at 5 o'clock in the morning, and I really didn't want to get up. I just wanted to hit snooze, and I didn't want to get up and go pray. And, and I, can I be honest? Right, I had to press through being tired this week. Anybody else ever have to press through being tired? 
And I'll admit, I did hit the snooze button a few times. But then I got up and I pressed through. I had to press through some emotional pain this week. Ever had to press through emotional pain to serve God? Ever have to press through failure? Ever have to press through temptation? You know, I, I had to press through temptation this week. How many got tempted at least once this week? Half of you. How many have been tempted today? I mean, I, I get tempted every day. Just don't take it. You know, I mean, I, I, I had some things happen where I just wanted to slap somebody. But I didn't do it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Can I tell you what? I had to press through some successes because how many know success can become a trap? Amen? Resting on successes of times past. I had to press through uh, some lies from the devil this week. Amen? I had to press through some lies from the devil on my way to church this morning. Ever get those, who do you think you are thoughts? Okay, I got nobody else saying yes to that one either. A couple of you. All right. I had to press through. I hate it when my voice cracks. I had to press through some questions this week. I had to press through some fake news this week. I had to press through some voices this week. All right, let me give you an example. Uh this isn't from this week, but Brian and I were laughing. Uh, you know, we occasionally laugh at this one because of some of the things and messages that we got in April. Now, if you remember what church was like in April and we were, you know, in the parking lot driving and figuring all this stuff out as we're going things, and I'm not kidding you, back to back days. Uh, on, uh, on day, and I, I, I'm not going to say who it was, okay, or anything, so just don't worry about that. But I got these messages saying that I should have been swallowed up like those prophets in the Old Testament. Remember the story of Moses when, when they opposed Moses and and the earth opened up and swallowed Dathan and his family. I got told, you should have been swallowed up like those prophets in the old, false prophets in the Old Testament. And my crime was because we had drive-in church. Of all things. Now, the next day, I get told, when are you going to get a backbone, you young pastor, and open up the doors and let people back in the church and do this? And that? When are you going to toughen up? <laughs> One guy says you should get swallowed up because you're having drive-in church. The other guy says you should get swallowed up because you're not, because you're having, you can't win. Amen? How many know there are voices that come at you that will try to get you and pull you off track? But I've found this thing. When I've made the decision that I'm going to pursue the knowledge of God, I'm going to pursue an intimate relationship with God, that going after Him is worth more than anything the world has to offer. You are going to hear voices that are going to come and try to pull you off track. You're going to have messengers that come that try to pull you off track. It is a sin that we make up our mind, I am going to pursue and press in, regardless of what this world does, the knowledge of God. You're going to have voices and people that fail you. But my hope is not built on people. It's built on Jesus. Amen? Amen? It's amazing the things that happened in pressing. I was reading this morning, uh, it's called the Hillel. And it's, it's what Hebrew scholars, and, and for a long time, they referred to Psalms 112 through Psalms 118. And at many of the different feasts of the Lord, you know, throughout the Old Testament, and, and even in Jesus' day, you know, Jesus kept the Passover, and, and they would have the different feast times where they would meet. And it was one of the, the, the portions of the Psalms that they would frequently read together and sing together and declare together. And I just happened to be reading through it this morning, and it caught my attention because I, I was thinking about this. You know, it was at Passover when Jesus was crucified, 
And the Last Supper was actually the Passover feast that they would gather together every year and they would remember how God had delivered them out of the land of Egypt and look forward to the day that God was going to bring deliverance through the Messiah. And it's here. And Jesus is enjoying the Last Supper with his disciples. And at the end of it, you'll notice in the Gospel of John, it says at the end of it that they rose and they sang hymns together. They were singing the Hallel, Psalms 112 through 118. The very last thing that they did before they, you know, turned the lights off at the Last Supper was they rejoiced and sang the Hallel together. And in Psalms 118, it's fascinating because you know, you realize Jesus knows what's happening tomorrow. He's already sent Judas out and said, what you're doing, go do quickly. He knows that he's about to be arrested. And I read through Psalms 118, and I get to that part that says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Singing about what he's about to experience. I will not fear man. What can he do to me? For the mercy of God endures forever. He's singing that with his disciples. And they leave that point, that night where they've been celebrating, and yet Jesus knows what's about to happen, where he's about to be arrested, and he's about to be stripped naked, and he's about to be beaten. He's about to be flogged with the cat of nine tails. He's about to have nails pierce his hand, and nails pierce his side. He's about to have his beard plucked out. He's about to be spat upon by the very creation that he's there to save. And yet the victory was not won at the cross. The victory was won when they left that place singing the hymns and went into a location called the Garden of Gethsemane. Everybody say Gethsemane. Gethsemane literally means wine press. You see, there was this garden right outside that Jesus used to love to go to, and they would take... and. and, and People talk whether it was grapes where they would produce wine or whether it was olives that they would crush and they would produce olive oil, two of the most important commodities in Israel and, and that were used frequently there. It's the picture of wine. It's the picture of olive oil. Both of them were fruit that demanded they get put in and go through a crushing process, a pressing in order to squeeze that oil and, and juice out of them. And it was in this place of great pressing where Jesus entered in, and, and it was so intense that it says that he was sweating great drops of blood. The pressure was so on him because sometimes when, when, when we're coming up into something and, and God is leading us in and God wants to do great things, there is a pressing season. And that pressure was so intense that he is sweating blood, and yet he cries out and he prays, God, if it is possible, translation, I do not want to have to do this tomorrow. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And he cried out for an hour and then he came back and his disciples were asleep and he woke them up and said, couldn't you watch and pray? And he went back and he prayed for another hour and they were asleep again and he woke them up and said, it's here. But it's interesting. He went into the press. I don't want to do this. And yet when he cried out, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done, says the angels of the Lord came and strengthened him. And he got up. And I want to tell you something. Victory that symbolized on the cross was won in the press. Gideon, threshing wheat and a wine press. Those two things do not work together. And that's a whole other sermon in itself. Their whole nation 
is being taken over by the Midianites. The Midianites have come, and they're, they're, they're stealing everything, destroying everything, causing all kinds of problems. And the angel of the Lord shows up to Gideon in a wine press. And he says, hey, mighty man of valor. Gideon's response, uh, <laughs> I think you got the wrong address, angel. <laughs> I'm the least of all the tribes. I'm the lowest in the family. Our family's the lowest, and I'm the lowest in the family. I mean, you got the bottom of the barrel. I want you to notice. On one side of the wine press, Gideon is very well aware, I am worthless. On the other side of the wine press is the mighty man of valor, is the general who leads 300 men against a 185,000-man Midianite army without swords and spears. They go into battle with a trumpet and a torch. Now, if that doesn't mess with your head, I don't know what... You're crazy. Somebody say, press. You want me to tell 31,700 of my 32,000 soldiers to go home and leave me with 300 men to go up against the 185,000 Midianite army? And God says, yeah, press. I mean, we're outnumbered 99 to 1. God says, press. Why? Because you're looking on that side of the wine press, but Gideon, if you'll stay loyal and go through the press and don't listen to the other voices, don't listen to what you've heard, and press in, I'm going to do something great in you. But you got to be willing to go through the press. On one side of the press, Midian and the king of Midianite, they run roughshod over the whole country. And one of the things I just love, I found it this morning. I'd never seen it before. Praise God, his word is so deep and so rich. There's two kings that were uh, led the Midianite armies, and they controlled and dominated everything, right? Guess where one of the kings is caught and put to death? At the wine press. Why? Because when you're willing to go through the press, that is the place where the voice of the enemy must die. Great things happen when we're willing to press. Four things real quickly and I'm going to be done. Luke chapter 5 says the crowd pressed in to hear the word of God. The crowd pressed in to hear the word of God. I want to tell you something. How many want to grow in your knowledge of God? And, and by the way, l- let me back up and use this as an illustration or, or, or you know, understanding. Knowledge of God doesn't mean I can quote a lot of facts about him. Amen? Knowledge of God. This is, this is the word translated, yada translated intimacy. It is that personal connection, no veil between, nothing separating, nothing keeping us apart. Wide open, you know, intimate in the same manner as a husband and a wife are wide open and know one another. It, uh, amen? It is that kind, of, that kind of connection and relationship with him. How many want that with God? You want to be just close with God. Nothing hidden. Amen? Nothing separating. And, 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 and I've found this, that if you really want to get close to God, how many really want to get close to God? You're going to have to press into the Word. It's impossible to grow close with God without being willing to press into the Word. We have to be willing to press into the Word. We have to be willing to press into the Word. Well, I've read my Bible all the way through before, Pastor John. Read it again! Amen? Read it again. 
Study the Word of God. Press into the Word of God. The more that you get into the Word of God and, and let that Word of God get into you, the, the, the closer that you will grow with God. Your connection with God deepens and, and grows and develops. And there must be a, a willingness to press into the Word of God. It's one of the reasons why I, I get so irritated when I hear this phrase. Now, forgive me. I'm being honest, okay? Things that... Boy, that would be a good series. Things that irritate Pastor John. I'm not preaching that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here's one, okay? I wasn't getting fed at that church. Now, I want to encourage you. You know, churches should be feeding people with the Word of God. Amen? I mean, we should be diving in. We should be studying the Word of God. We should be growing the Word of God. I'll be 100% admit that, okay? But one of the things that's interesting is if your only meal spiritually that you eat is on Sunday morning between 9 and noon, you're in trouble. Amen? We need to be feeding ourselves on the Word of God. Amen? We, we need to be grow, but I just don't understand it when I read it. That's okay. Keep studying. It will, it will grow. It will get better. I don't read very well. That's okay. It, it, if, there's, if there's learning issues where, where it's, it's challenging, there are tools and resources we have available. We'd love to be able to make those available so that people can grow in the Word. We're daily broadcasting now. Why? Because we're wanting to encourage people in the Word of God to study the Word of God, to grow in the Word of God. Amen? The Word of God is our lifeline, and if we want to get closer to God, we have to be willing to press in to the Word. And sometimes that means pressing in when we're tired and pressing through it. Sometimes that means pressing through excuses and pressing through other stuff. There has to be a commitment to the Word of God if we want to grow in knowing Him. Amen? And then we get a another one. So we're going to press in. Everybody say, press in. I'm going to press into the Word. And then you get that woman with the issue. How many remember that woman with the issue? Don't look around the room. How many know somebody that has some issues? Don't look around the room. Okay. It could be men too, by the way. But this in the Bible, this was a woman that had the issue of blood. And she was willing to press through. Somebody say press through. She was willing to press through the crowd. I want to tell you, if you want to press in to your connection with God, your relationship with God, you will not be able to just grow in God by hanging with the crowd. There's going to have to be a willingness to press through the crowd. I don't, I don't know if you figured it out, but sometimes the crowd doesn't always make wise decisions. It is so easy to just go along with the crowd. But it's impossible to really grow in God personally when my only connection with Him is in a corporate setting. Think about that statement Jesus makes when it says, many will say in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not, everybody say we, and it says, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not heal people in your name? Did we not cast out devils in your name? And Jesus says to this, he says, he looks at that person and says, depart from me, you We don't have a collective salvation. Amen? And we also are not collectively, irredeemably guilty. Amen? God wants to grow us individually. Now, He built this in such a way that we need one another. Amen? It's a dangerous thing to disconnect from the body of Christ because we need one another. And yet, we have a relationship with God individually. And you cannot grow individually in your relationship with God just by what you have on the crowd. Now, I'll tell you something. You get in a crowd like this where you've got people that are pressing in. I mean, that's a hungry church. Y'all want God. If you didn't want God, you wouldn't be here this morning. Amen? And you're wanting to grow in God. And, and I tell you what, there are things that we get because we're in here rubbing shoulders one with another. We need each other. And yet we also have to have this one-on-one. -on -one. Amen? 
And she was willing to press through the crowd. She was willing to press through the crowd when it could have killed her. Because her issue that she had could have contaminated by their standards anyone that she came into contact with. And yet she said, I'm willing to take all that I am and risk it in order to reach out and touch the hem of his garment. If I could just press through the crowd and just get a hold of him, I know I will be made whole. Are you willing to press through the crowd? I want to tell you, it's so easy or I should say this, it would be so easy just to do what everybody else is doing. But God has not called us as the Father's house just to do what everybody else does. Amen? Then you get into Philippians. If anybody knew how to press, it's the Apostle Paul. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that guy, he pressed through being stoned. That is not our version of stoned in America, 21st century, okay? That's when they picked up stones and they hit him until he died. And he just pressed through it the next morning and climbed back up and went out to the next county and kept preaching. Somebody say press. He was shipwrecked multiple times and kept preaching the gospel. Somebody say press. He got beaten with rods and kept on preaching the gospel. Somebody say press. And in one of those, one of those times, he's in the bottom of the Philippian jail having been beaten with rods in stocks. And he decided to just keep pressing and worshiping God in the bottom of the prison. And suddenly the ground begins to shake and the doors fly open. And he was willing to press. He didn't even get up and leave. And the jailer comes out and he's like, oh, my goodness, I'm going to die because all the prisoners are used. He goes out to take his sword and kill his own self. And Paul says, hey, don't hurt yourself. We're all here. And the Philippian jailer comes in and sees them all in there. Why? Because somebody was willing to press. And Paul says, hey, don't take your own life. And the guy says, what must I do to be saved? Because y'all got something I want. And it says that he and his whole family were baptized. And that jailer becomes the first pastor at the Philadelphia Baptist Church. And Paul writes back to him. That's, their, that's the beginning of that church. And Paul writes back to him. And he says, hey, I have not yet apprehended and accomplished everything God has in store for me, so I press. Somebody say press. Time out. You've done all these things, Paul, and you haven't accomplished? No, there's more. I'm not satisfied with life as it is right now. I press upward for the high call of God in Christ Jesus. Not only do we got to press in and press through, we got to be willing to press up. Amen. Press up. God has something in store that we got to be willing to reach for. We'll never experience if we don't reach and press. Oh, that's a much better point than y'all are shouting right now. We the high call of God in Christ Jesus. Rodney, do you know what it means that God has a high call for you? That's not just a bar that God's expecting you to jump over. Okay, that's an assignment that is so far beyond your reach that you can't get to it on your own. And because it's the high call, God says when he called Rodney in order to do and accomplish this thing, it means that he has put all the grace that you need, all the strength that you need, all the tools that you need, all the resources that you need so that you can get there. You just got to be willing to say, I'm going to keep reaching. I'm going to keep pressing, even though I can't, I can't do it on my own, but it's a call. It is the call of God, that, and, and as soon as you begin to reach and say, I'm not going to quit reaching until I've got it, you got to be willing to press for it. Amen? I want you to remember this. At the beginning, we talked about pressing. It's not always easy, but my goodness, is it worth it? Amen? Hallelujah. 
little bit earlier in the book he had written, I'm hard-pressed between two things. Oh, I want to go to heaven and be with Jesus. How many want to go to heaven and be with Jesus? Oh, my goodness, to walk on streets of gold that he has paved, to enjoy the presence of God, to look the one who died for me in the eyes and just give him a big hug and kiss his feet. Say, thank you. He's got a smile on his face. You realize that? Because for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, despising his shame, and sat, out, sat down. What's the joy before him? Being connected with his creation. He's going to welcome us home. He's not going to sit down there, you dirty, rotten person. Why'd you do this? this? No, he, he threw it all away. He doesn't remember your junk. Amen? He's like the, the prodigal son. Remember the picture of the father? You're home! Woo! And Paul says, man, I am hard-pressed. I really want to go be with him. But it's more important for you that I press on. Amen? It's more important for you that I press on. Are you willing to press on? Our world's going nuts. But that's okay. We're going to press on. And we're going to occupy until he comes. And we're going to keep pushing against the gates of hell and see the kingdom of God move forward regardless of what people say and regardless of what people do. We've got to be like the Apostle Paul that says, I'm going to press on. I'm going to keep pressing on. I'm going to keep pressing on until that day comes when the trumpet sounds and the sky splits and my Savior descends to bring us all home. I'm going to press on. Amen? Not always easy, but my goodness, it's worth it. And it's the attitude of being willing to press, to be in hot pursuit of a deeper relationship with God that makes all the difference in the world. Amen? If you don't have the attitude of being in hot pursuit, it's, it's a chore. Oh, I got to do this today for God. No, it's not that. Oh, my goodness, I get to know Him better. I get, oh, this is so exciting. Something changes. Witness in hot pursuit. Amen? Can we pray this morning? How many of y'all are in hot pursuit of God? Come on, just lift your hand up. That's okay. I'm in hot pursuit. I don't always get it right, but I'm pursuing God. Come on, that's you. I want you to stand to your feet. I'm, I'm pursuing God. I don't always get it right, but I'm pursuing God. I'm in pursuit of God. I may have some things I got to press on and press in and press through and press up, but I'm, I'm going to keep pressing because I'm pursuing God. Amen? I'm in pursuit of God. And I love this about God. God says that if anyone will draw near to me, I will draw near to him. When we make the decision I'm going to press into God, God presses into us. Amen? Father, I thank you for those in this room. I bless everyone in this room. Everybody is joining online in Jesus' name. Your word promises that when we draw near to you, when we press in and pursue you, that you will draw near to us. And God, I pray that everyone in this room that has said, God, I desire to pursue you, to press into you, that we would experience the joy of the press, Father God, the joy of the pursuit of you, realizing that things might be one way, but on the other side of this press, it is worth it. It doesn't feel good when we first started doing that bench press, but three weeks later, suddenly it begins to get easy and it begins to get better. God, I pray that those in here would have just the, the, the grit and determination to press on and press into you, and God, I pray that you would stir us up to know you better, not get distracted by the things of this world, and we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of service this morning. Have a wonderful Sunday afternoon. It's going to be a great week at the Father's house. Amen? God bless you.